And I just want to know what's the most beneficial book or any kind of literature that you found helped your investing career. Okay, I have an answer because I know you slacked me the question about a half an hour before we started, <laughs> so I grabbed it off my t- my my <laughs> my shelf, and I'm going to go. Mm, let me think about it, and then I'm going to hold it up, and people will go, "How did he have it to hand?" Um, <laughs> so uh, you know, there's there's a lot of books that are regard. So the the book that had the greatest impact on my investing life was a book about investing. You'd never think of it, think of it, but it actually was. Like, I mean, what book had the biggest impact on my guitar playing while well, it was a book about guitar playing. So um, I'd love to kind of draw from something very intellectual. Yeah, like yeah, human all too human by Salad, Frederick Nietzsche or whatever. A collection of Dali <laughs> paintings or something really made you see through the The collective mist. short stories of Guy de Maupassant. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Um, so anyway, the uh, anyway, like there's a load of books out there. And as I said, what, 35,000? That would take you 88 years to read. And it's absolutely preposterous. But there, there's a generally regarded short list of five that um, you'll often see are constantly being referenced as the greatest investment books ever written. The first is The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. And I would say you have to be a very intelligent investor because it's a tedious read, although there's a version with footnotes by Jason Zweig, which make it far more readable. Um, Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits by Philip Fisher, wonderful book, very readable. Um, A Random Walk uh, down Wall Street by Burton Malkiel, uh, a great book, very readable. Uh, Stocks for the Long Run by Jeremy Siegel or Siegel, Professor Jeremy Siegel. One of my favorites. It's almost always on my table because it has basically a short explanation with a little bit of data on every term you're ever going to encounter in stock investing. And I think it's the book I, everyone should have. And then the the go-to Bible, which is One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch, which espouses that we all have an edge on Wall Street. I, I'd imagine One Up on Wall Street was the one that had the greatest uh, impact on my investing life from a, I can relate to this perspective. Mm, yeah. But I would say the book I most dip into is this one here. Can, can you see that? Do, 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 do. That is, is okay. A Warren Bur- this is Warren Buffett, it, is it? That's right, exactly. It's the essays of Warren Buffett, Lessons for Corporate America. And it's the essays of Warren Buffett, funnily enough, and it's compiled by a a professor of business and law called Lawrence Cunningham. And I dip into it, and despite its really bland cover, it's actually (laughs) colourful and enriching. And it is a wonderful collation of Warren Buffett's essays. And uh, and therefore, it's a document, or documentation rather, of his and Charlie's and therefore Berkshire's investing philosophy. And it's so readable. And now I have the 2001 edition, which means that um, there ain't nothing in it that's more than 22 years old, but it's still written uh, with a turn of phrase and I suppose a verbal dexterity that just keeps it so fresh. I think it's a wonderful book and, and hats off to the guy who wrote it. And do you want to hear something? Um, uh, do you know the blurb uh, that you get inside a cover? He managed to get Charlie Munger, uh, who is probably the most, how would you say? Um, old. Like, well, he's the <laughs> oldest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. He's very frank. But like you heard my story about him eating the Reese's the peanut um, brittle, the mm. butter brittle. Like so. Anyway, Charlie Munger is to the point. But he wrote a blurb, and you know what? Can I read it to you? Have you time? Because we Please. can edit it out. It's a Go bit on. short. It's a bit long. <laughs> very practical, Charlie Munger. That's the entire blurb. <laughs> <laughs> the most practical guy of all time but he's known him he's like, known him for 60 years as well Eric. <laughs> yeah that's right Jack. i know but warren buffett i guess wrote the book but didn't compile it and it's the, the compilation that makes it so kind of readable and nice thing about this particular book is that you don't need to read it in linear fashion you can just let it fall at any page and just read a, a, a page from it and it will bring value to investing life but do you mind if i just pause for a minute and read to you um the writing a short excerpt from uh, the 2012 berkshire hathaway uh shareholder letter is written by warren buffett because it's possibly my favorite thing ever written about the stock market and it's only two paragraphs so i'm really summarizing here i'm summarizing a summary to a summary uh i have it here on my screen it says 
Today, the world's gold stock is about the so Warren Buffett wrote this. Okay, so I'm just going to this is a lovely way of, of crystallizing the pursuit of stock investing. Okay, he says, today, the world's gold stock is about 170,000 metric tons. If all of this gold were melded together, it would form a cube of about 68 feet per side. Picture it fitting comfortably within a basketball field. At $1,750 per ounce, gold's price, as I write this, it would value it to be about $9.6 trillion. Call this cube pile A. Now let's create pile B, costing an equal amount. For that, we could buy all of the US cropland, which is 400 million acres with output of about $200 billion annually, plus 16 Exxon Mobiles, the world's most profitable company at this time, earning more than $40 billion annually. After these purchases, we would have $1 trillion left over for walking around money. No sense in feeling strapped after, buying, after this buying binge. Can you imagine an investor with $9.6 trillion selecting pile A over pile B? So when you think about alternative assets, and that, that's it, and he, he elaborates on how gold does nothing. It has no, it has a couple of um, perceived value points, uh, I suppose, cosmetic jewelry and uh, some limited applications in medicine. But gold is ju literally just an element. And mm. somehow we, humankind, have decided its value because there was once upon a time where it was absolutely the way we, we extracted value from Mother Earth. But now we can invest in businesses that's only purpose is to create wealth for its owners. And Warren Buffett has a lovely way of just bringing all these stories to a point where you can go, oh yeah, I get that. Why would you buy gold when you can buy um, Apple? It just doesn't make any sense. So anyway, that's that's the book, The Essays of uh, Warren Buffett, Lessons for Corporate America, the most boring cover you'll see on your bookshelf, but one you'll take down over and over again. And put Jeremy Siegel's book and, and uh, Philip Lynch's, Peter Lynch's book there as well. They're just wonderful.